This is the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro. It's a standalone 4K screen capture device. And what's one of those you might say? Well, stay tuned and I'll tell you. Now first, a full disclosure, Cloner Alliance sent us this UHD Pro review sample without charge and we're not required to return it. Uh, but we accepted only on the basis that we're free to give our unbiased opinion and that we retain full editorial control of the video. So this device provides a neat way to record an HDMI input straight onto a USB drive. And it can also present that HDMI input as a web camera to your computer. So this Cloner Alliance device has got a lot of useful applications. Take for example gamers who want to record runs on the most demanding titles. Uh, they won't need to worry about slowing their machine down with screen recording software. Uh, just run an HDMI cable straight from your gaming machine to the UHD Pro and then plug in a USB drive to record. And since the device has HDMI pass-through, you just need another cable to go to your monitor. Now, you can also plug the Cloner Alliance into your computer via USB, and it behaves like a webcam. So you could use a device like this to very easily connect a proper camera to something like Zoom. And both video and audio are accessible via the device. You don't need any special drivers. It works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I can see that working really well for houses of worship or simple live conferences. And being able to record the HDMI signal at the same time, well, that's an added bonus. Now, clearly, this device would also work well for streamers using software like OBS. In fact, the more you think about it, the more applications you can find. So let's take a quick look at the features, and we'll talk about how well it works, and consider how it compares to other products on the market. So this device retails at $239, and we've seen it on Amazon UK for £234. Uh, in the box itself, we get uh, a power adapter, HDMI cable, a USB cable, and a remote control. So pretty much everything you need to get started, apart from the batteries for the remote. Uh, there is also a simple instruction guide, but really the product is fairly self-explanatory. The UHD Pro is of plastic construction, but it feels reassuringly hefty and it has a decent build quality. There are four rubber feet to stop it from sliding around on the table, and you can see they, they work pretty well. Whole table's wobbling here. And that is important because uh, you could end up with wires hanging off three sides of this device. So let's run through the ports. On the rear, we've got a latching power switch, the power connector, and two HDMI ports, one in and one out. There's a USB type A port on the right hand side and that's where you'll plug in a USB drive. Now, we've been testing it with a Samsung T5 and that seems to work just fine. Uh, we've also got a micro USB socket here and you'll use that with the supplied cable to connect the device to a computer for that webcam functionality that we mentioned. On the front of the device we've got some 3.5mm audio jacks, a line in, a line out so you can pass through the audio and a microphone input. There's the infrared sensor for the remote control, and then we've got three buttons. One toggles between H.264 and H.265 codecs, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, that just applies to recording to USB storage, though. Then we have a snapshot button, which takes a frame grab and saves it as an image. And then finally, we've got the start-stop recording button. Uh, the cloner logo on the top of the device will light up in blue if you're recording 4K and green for 1080p. Uh, but there's also a ring of light that runs around the side of the device and that's blue when recording H.264 and green if it's H.265. So at a glance, you can tell what the cloner is doing. Additional functions are available via the remote control. And the cloner has a simple on-screen menu system for accessing its features. And it's really self-explanatory. It's very easy to figure it out. So, so far, so good. Apart from the fact, I think, that the cables end up coming out of three sides of the device if you're using those front audio ports, and at least two sides if not. Uh, and I think that could be a bit tidier. Cloner Alliance are claiming 4K or UHD support with this device, and that is true, but it's limited to either 24 or 30 frames per second. If you put 4K resolution at 60 frames per second through the box, the output and the recording will be at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And that also applies to the HDMI output. Uh, we'll pop up a table on screen which shows you all of the input and output resolutions. So I think it would be better if the HDMI port was a true pass-through, even if the recording was scaling down the resolution. Uh, because the way it is, it means that the 4K mode will only be useful for scenarios where you're using a camera, uh, because no one is going to run their computer at 24 or 30 hertz. 
Uh, it's also disappointing that there's no 25 FPS option for the half of the world that uses the 50 Hz PAL standard, and that might limit its usefulness in some markets. I think I'd ignore the 4K claims and just stick to 1080p, since that's where this device makes more sense. There's 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second options. I got my son to do a bit of PC gaming and use the cloner to record. Uh, he was quite happy about that day of work, uh, and as you can see it works just fine. Uh, so then we plugged in a Nintendo Switch and recorded that. And here then is a whole new application that will mean a lot to gaming streamers, because you can plug your console into the cloner and then connect it to a computer. Using something like OBS, you could easily set up a picture-in-picture -picture stream with your computer's webcam and the cloner then providing the main feed from the gaming console. So this is a really useful product for streaming applications, but how does it compare to other devices? Now, I use the ATEM Mini from Blackmagic Design for live streaming. Uh, this provides full HD output, and there are four HDMI inputs, and you can switch between them. So it has way more capability than the cloner, and it's not really that much more expensive at $295. This can also be connected to a computer as a webcam, but what it can't do is record to external media at the same time. For that, you need the A10 Mini Pro at $495. And if you want to push the boat out to $795, you can get the A10 Mini Pro ISO. And that records not just the main output, but also each individual connection. And that can be really useful for editing afterwards. Blackmagic Design also offer devices with eight HDMI inputs and then more professional versions with SDI inputs like this one. So I think this is where the Cloner Alliance UHD Pro might struggle a bit, on price. Uh, given how good these ATEMs are, I think this one needs to be just a little bit cheaper to make more sense. But I'm sure there are people out there who just need a single HDMI connection, and for them, this might be the perfect product. Uh, if that is the case, though, Cloner Alliance also makes something called the Box Pro at $173, which seems to have all the functions of this device without the 4K options. And given how limited those 4K uses are, I think that makes more sense. In all, this is a good product, and no doubt by now you'll know if it's something that could do a job for you. Uh, we've popped some links in the description if you'd like to try one of these out for yourself. Uh, let us know in the comments section how you might use a device like this. Uh, thanks in advance for all of your subs, your shares, and your likes or dislikes. And we'll see you again soon for some more geekery.